Because failure to secure an appropriate airway can quickly result in death or incapacity, airway management is perhaps one of the most crucial skills for an emergency physician to master. The cornerstone of emergency airway treatment is endotracheal intubation. It's not always easy to decide whether or not to intubate. To spot indicators of impending respiratory failure, you'll need clinical experience. Intubation is required for at least one of the five reasons listed below. In the emergency department, RSI or rapid sequence intubation is the recommended method of endotracheal tube intubation. Here are indications of intubation or rapid sequence intubation in ICU. Number 1. Failure to maintain airway patency as follows. Swelling of upper airway as in anaphylaxis or infection facial or neck trauma with oropharyngeal bleeding or hematoma and angioedema. Number 2. Decreased consciousness and loss of airway reflexes, as follows. Failure to protect airway against aspiration decreased consciousness that leads to regurgitation of vomit, secretions, or blood is one of the indication of intubation. Number 3. Failure to ventilate is as follows. End result of failure to maintain and protect the airway. A prolonged respiratory effort that results in fatigue or failure, as in status asthmaticus or severe COPD. Number 4. Failure to oxygenate, that is transport oxygen to pulmonary capillary blood, is as follows. Diffuse pulmonary edema, acute respiratory distress syndrome, large pneumonia, or airspace disease and pulmonary embolism. Number 5. Anticipated clinical course or deterioration that the need for situation control, tests, and procedures, as follows. Uncooperative trauma patients with life-threatening injuries who need procedures, that is chest tube or immediate CT scanning. Stab wound to neck with expanding hematoma. Septic shock with high minute ventilation and poor peripheral perfusion. Intracranial hemorrhage with altered mental status and need for close blood pressure control. Cervical spine fracture with concern for edema and loss of airway patency is one of the indication, depending on the decision taken by physician. We have seen indications, now let's go through some of the contraindications. Absolute contraindications include the following. Total upper airway obstruction, which requires a surgical airway. Total loss of facial or oropharyngeal landmarks, which requires a surgical airway. Relative contraindications include the following. Anticipated difficult airway, in which endotracheal intubation may be unsuccessful, resulting in reliance on successful bag valve mask ventilation to keep an unconscious patient alive. In this scenario, techniques for awake intubation and difficult airway adjuncts can be used. Multiple methods can be used to evaluate the airway and the risk of difficult intubation. The crash airway, in which the patient is in an arrest situation, unconscious and apneic. In this scenario, the patient is already unconscious and may be flaccid. Further, no time is available for pre-oxygenation, pre-treatment, or induction and paralysis. BVM or bag valve ventilation, intubation, or both should be performed immediately without medications. Thank you for watching. In the next video we will discuss the endotracheal intubation in detail, thank you.